Now some recipes, they tell you to cook until it's called panad, and that's when it just starts to stick. Um, I don't know, I don't, I don't do that all the time. Yeah, you can. Is this what if she had a bit of a But it happens right away. You don't really need to let it go. Now, if you're dealing with a much larger batch, that's when it comes to be an issue. Give yourself enough space um, in your pot to make this work. Use a heavy duty wooden spoon. I'll tell you right now, if you use a spoon that is a metal handle with the sharp edges, and you try and do this, it hurts. So you need to use a round handle spoon. All these little things that I guarantee you, you're going to go home and you're going to pull that metal spoon out and you're going to go, ow, that's great. Chef Sarah told me to use a, a, a spoon like this. So the wooden spoon works really well. You can all see now, it pulled away from the sides. It created like a ball on its own. It looks like Play-Doh. If you've ever made Play-Doh, it's exactly the same type of taste. Okay? So now what we're going to do is some chefs do this right in the pot. I don't like to do that, and I don't like to teach you how to do that, because most of the time in the restaurants, you're not baking a batch this small. Okay? You're doing a much larger batch. So you're not going to sit there for half an hour trying to get all this stuff in there, because that's what's going to take you to do it by hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer this now directly into the KitchenAid with a paddle. We're going to turn that on for about three to four minutes on first speed, and what you're going to see immediately is, watch, when I do this, what do you see coming off of it? You're going to see it more in the, um, in the mixer. So let it cool down a little bit, because if I just start adding the eggs right into here, what's going to happen? You're going to scramble them. So we want to, as the eggs slowly, one at a time, or if you're doing larger batches, whenever it says one at a time, you can increase that ratio. So you can do two, ten, you know, twenty at a time if you're doing a thousand pounds of something. So um, use your common sense when it comes to that. But we're going to cool this down a little bit with the mixer, with the paddle. Add our eggs a little bit at a time. Um, are the egg whites in here as well? Yes. Okay, so we want to hold back a little bit because I want to show you how to know when it's done, when it has enough give to it. So there's a fine line of too runny or too thick. So I want you to actually visually see that when we turn the mixer off, okay? So sometimes depending on the moisture content of the air or the flour or anything like that or the size of the eggs, we'll... Um, make a difference on how many you actually add. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. So we'll see what it looks like. Then we have pastry bags fitted with a round tip, and I'll show you the size that we're going to use to pipe. And then it starts in a high oven, goes to a low oven. What we're trying to do is achieve a puff and a crust in the first 15 minutes mm -hmm. at a very high temperature. Then on the inside, it's still kind of gooey. We need to dry it out, but I don't need it any darker on the outside. So then we transfer it to a lower oven. So it's gonna, we're going to do in this oven 425, and I'm going to do 350 in the other oven. You can vary that a little bit, 450, 375, if yours isn't as efficient. Okay? But the second round is just trying to dry out the inside, so that we'll have a hollow center to pipe whatever filling we want. If you want to pipe straight up Nutella in there, you can. If you want to make a lemon mousse, you can. If you want to do chocolate mousse, you can. But we're going to do the pastry cream next week. Questions? Would it be better if you separate the 